Rise and ground, folks. Welcome to another edition of Monday Morning Quarterback. Guys, I got my first lead from YouTube. I got a customer that called me last week. She said that she seen one of my Duquesne videos from back in the day on YouTube. Guys, this customer has a brand new Duquesne AC. She said that it's been working fine all summer, but she said that um, a couple of days ago she turned it on and she has warm air blowing out the vents and she can't get in contact with the other company that installed the unit. So, guys, I'm almost there right now. Let's go take a look and let's try to do what this dude came. I'll see y'all when I get there. All right, guys, we're inside. And according to this customer, she got warm air coming out the vents. She turned the thermostat to cool, drop it down to 60. And she said last week that the room temperature didn't get below 84. So right now I'm inside. Filter doesn't look too bad. But our supply is in the 70s, which is not good. And she has a Duquesne setup, 80% Duquesne furnace, cool and condenser. But let's take a look outside. I'll show you guys something here. And she said that she heard the outside unit run, but then she didn't have any electrical problems. This is a two-year-old Duquesne unit. And that's not good. Flat on charge. All right, guys. I should have some nitrogen in the truck. Let me grab some. I'll be back. And that was no dice, guys. I thought I had more nitro. I am on the way back to the job site now with two things full of nitro. I'll see y'all when I get back. All right, guys. Got it up to 600. And I've been spraying everything out here. And I've got no movement. Let me open up the evap cool cabinet. I'll be back. All right, guys. There isn't any rub outs outside. I checked all my U-bands. I got my door off here. Let me see something here. No sounds. Inside or outside. And it's currently holding at 605 or 600 PSI outside. So the jar is good. Suction port is good. And how about our fixed orifice? Looks good. Everything seems to be holding. Everything seems to be holding here. I was like, wow, that's my liquid line. <laughs> that's one of the plumbing pipes. That's what it goes outside. 
outside. Let me see here. Got that 600 PSI. Anything that leaks, we certainly would hear it. I'm not getting anything. I'm gonna keep this open. Let's go outside and see if the pressure drops. It's been about five minutes now. But 600 is definitely 600. And from experience, any small leak certainly would have either showed up in sight or in pressure drop. I guess what I don't know is I don't know the history here, but if they had a landscaping accident, I certainly would have knew what was going on. But and <laughs> what do you know? Guys, right now, all three of my leak checks performed this summer has been at the condenser. <laughs> what do you know? All right, guys, let me get my Allen key set. I'll be back. All right, guys, real quick, I got my Allen key set. Now, one thing that can cause this to happen, number one, is if when you install condensers and heat pumps, if you don't use cool gel and put a rag over the, the suction valve, this could happen. You could heat up the valve too much. And even after you open up the valve and the unit works, you could have, from that excess heat, you could have eventual leaks. So for one, if you guys are brazen, especially with the suction line, with both suction line and the liquid side valve, make sure you guys are wrapping these valves and using cool gel so this doesn't happen and of course make sure you guys are taking out those shader pins but i'm going to take the cap off and right now the unit was cool and she said last summer she just noticed the issue a couple of weeks ago when she's turned on the ac but i'm going to take this cap off and i'm going to see what's going on here i'll be right back guys sure enough this very very small leak is enough to make the AC unit completely leak out of refrigerant within one summer so what that means is even if the AC doesn't run this thing is still gonna leak so all right let me get my island key and I'm gonna see if we can get it to stop leaking I'll be back There's definitely some play in this valve I don't want to break it but there was certainly some play Worst case, we definitely could call in another suction valve. But. Let me see if I can turn this. A little bit. And actually, while I'm at it, let me check both of these. Oh, liquid side is good. All right, guys, I'll be right back. Let me turn this up. another quarter turn, see if I can get this to stop. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we was able to get it to stop. What I'm gonna do is, I'm probably gonna put some, uh, put some sealant around the threads. And I got my rinse set, instead of using my channel locks, I'm gonna use my rinse set. I'm gonna seal that off and then I'm gonna pressurize it again. And also, 
I'll make a note and I'll explain to the customer that if this comes back again, we'll probably have to replace that suction valve. But all right, guys, let me get to it. I'll be back. And guys, I, even though I hate using this stuff, I put some thread lock around that suction valve. Once again, guys, I know tomorrow, if not tomorrow, probably Wednesday or Thursday, it's gonna be 90 degrees. What I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna call Linux or call Allied Air to see, just worst case, how long it's gonna take to get another suction valve. But right now, I put the ceiling on and no bubbles. So we're good money there, but we always gotta be prepared for worst case scenario. But all right guys, let me take this nitro out. Let me pull the vacuum and let me start putting all this stuff back together. And I also gotta go downstairs and put the door back on that evet. All right, guys, I'll be back. All right, guys, we got the door on and we got a new filter in. Right now, I got that unit in the vacuum. And I got to wire up my fan motor. So let me do the wires and I got to get the refrigerant over here. All right, guys, I'll be back. All right, guys. We got a 40 degree coil, 225, 250 head pressure. We are rocking and rolling. And guys, I got a weird premonition that I might be doing a service call in about a month or two right next door. Want to know why? <laughs> Guys, that's job security. Anything you put around that unit, I'm pretty sure we're going to come back out to fix something whenever it breaks. But guys, that's all there is to it. I'm taking my tools back to the truck and I got to do the paperwork. And that's all there is to it. Leak check. Sprayed everything. I sprayed the top of the valve, but I had the right idea wrong execution <laughs> i didn't spray the side of the valves where the threads are and guys that's what was going on my suction line valve had a leak in it so i front seated the valve make sure everything's tight and i put leak sealing around the the cap and after i did that i pressure tested it again no bubbles i actually pressure tested well, i leak checked both valves the suction line and the liquid line valve and no leaks and I'm going to put that in the notes once again that if this problem comes back, we'll just have to order a new suction line valve. And guys, I actually did call Allied Air. That valve was about a week away. So guys, regardless, if this were, I'm pretty sure we should be good to go. But worst case, if this doesn't work, that valve will be about a week away and we can put a new valve in. But there we have it, guys. Also, I'm going to sign this customer up for maintenance. So moving forward, we can just keep an eye out on these numbers, make sure that we can avoid breakdowns and we are good to go. There you have it. Peace out. I'll see you guys on the next one.